we're going to bring in Parrot. Come look at this. All right. All right. So Perry is the owner of Matunic Oyster Bar, and I'm getting people there telling me that he doesn't really need an introduction because he's so well known down there, but I want to make sure everybody knows, look at this, this is absolutely beautiful. All right. All right, so Perry, because we got a lot to talk about with you. Thank you. Oh, look at this, branded glasses. What? He may not get these back. Look at that. Thank you for joining Thanks us, friend. I appreciate Thanks it. For all right, so before we get into your whole story, because we got a lot I want to talk about with you, and I've got a lot of uh, questions that are already coming in for things to talk about with you. So mm -hmm. tell me what you brought me. So, because this, if you got to see, Tony, you can see this, right? So I have quinoa crab, um, uh, Jonah crab from Point Judith uh, over quinoa, and uh, microgreens from okay. Matunic Organic Vegetable Farm, and of course, an avocado. So extremely healthy. That's a good one. That quinoa is amazing. Good. Yeah, gluten free. And then we have... Molly, did you hear that? Gluten-free. <laughs> the, <laughs> the fans in the back. <laughs> and, and then we have uh, a native striped bass with uh, fermented black beans and miso. Uh, in miso? And, and, yeah, and, and there's uh, a, a ginger miso sauce in the bottom. And then there's uh, um, farm, uh, matunic vegetable farm, uh, organic vegetables. Uh, there's uh, rainbow chard and bok choy. Uh, sauteed around the white sticky rice. This, besides the presentation being absolutely spectacular, I have the aromas of this, and the, it's just making me like salivate. This I could eat all day long, and I, I've never had quinoa with crab. I just never even thought of the concept. And I'm, I eat crab like three days a week. It's like I love crab. Meat. But that's an amazing concept. So is this more? That's more of an appetizer or an entree? This is an appetizer. It's an appetizer. Some that's, people get it as an entree, but it's an appetizer. I would eat that as an entree okay. with a bottle of wine. Yeah, that's we brought the uh, 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 Joseph Phelps uh, Chardonnay, so we've. You know, really been trying to improve our wine selection, and that's something that uh, um, you know. We so, do you find that well now that things. that's happening more, that people are pairing up all summer long with the seafood with the wine? Yeah, and that's you, know, well, I, uh, you know, obviously the whites move uh, much quicker in the summer, and the rosés, and in the winter we have more of a switch to, to red. So red but, yeah. uh, you know, we've really uh, tried to, uh, you know, find some really good uh, wines and and. and you know, have them at a good value there. And this Joseph Phelps, this is a great brand. This, yeah. I mean, I can tell you. So we're gonna we're not gonna let this go to waste right here. And I have to say that I was looking up Perry from a tunic because I have several friends that are out there enjoying you that live down that way on a regular basis. One of them being Martha Sheridan, who is the president of the Province Work Convention of Bureau. She's always down there mm -hmm. and touting you guys. And I was last out there. I was at your place right after Labor Day last year. It's probably the last time that I've been to Matunic. Um, but I have to say, when I was researching to try to Plan this segment, I found Perry on TEDx. So before I even got to your website, I saw this TEDx that you did. How long ago was it? Uh, a little over a year ago. Was it March? So if you're not familiar with the TEDx formats, they bring together different topics that they do, and it's an educational aspect to bring people in. And your topic, you did phenomenally. It was Thank about you. how you got into the business, what you're doing, and you had this huge contraption that you're, the pull rig, yeah. This thing was massive, it was as big as you, yeah, <laughs> that's pull rig. But if you get a chance, and I think your TEDx is on the website. It's on, it's on uh, the Tuna Coast of our website, yeah. So if you get a chance, it's something, you know, after you check out this segment, obviously, is to go check that out because you did a great job. So thank you. cheers to you, thank cheers. you for joining us Thanks today. for having me. My pleasure. Wow, that's absolutely delicious. I won't be going anywhere. It's so creamy and buttery. So one of the things that I want to bring up, and I've gotten at least three or four questions that have come in already for Perry, is about how you got into the business and talking about this, because you're not the chef, you're the owner, but mm -hmm. this concept that was developed has kind of been ingrained in you. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've been doing this from since you were a child, right? Uh, yeah, well, I started digging shellfish when I was 12, you know, with that contraption, with that bull rake, and then um, uh, you know, I started to get more efficient at that, started scuba, scuba diving for shellfish, and I uh, studied aquaculture and fisheries technology at URI, and as I uh, you know, continued to dig shellfish, and you know, it was commercial, uh, did some commercial fishing offshore as well. And uh, started the one acre oyster farm, expanded it to three acres, and then seven acres, started selling oysters all over the country. And I needed a commercial dock to run my business out of, and so the only commercial dock on the whole pond was uh, a rundown restaurant that had been closed for several years. Really? Uh, and so I bought that uh, um, restaurant that was closed basically because I needed those docks. And uh, you know, I started the restaurant with the farm to plate theme. I had been doing farmers markets for years, and I had. Uh, uh, before I bought the restaurant, so I knew the the value of uh, you know good local food, and I never really uh, valued that until I, until I started um, going to farmers market to, to be a vendor. I, I, I tasted some arugula from a guy next to me, and it was just you know incredible. At first, I thought there was something wrong with it; it was so spicy. Because it was the freshest and I everything was like, that came man, up. Yeah. I really got addicted to it. I started eating it all the time. I felt better, and I was um, 
and so on that really understood the value of local food and they started doing that. So this is a good point. So I, probably a couple months ago we did a segment that was talking about locally sourced items and I had chefs in that did that. You can't get more locally sourced than what you're doing right now. Yeah, we grow our own vegetables, we grow our own oysters, and we try to get uh, you know, as much local seafood and other produce as we can. So vegetable and oysters, but you said that Matunic basically started because of the fact that you needed the docks. It wasn't that you were interested in getting the restaurant. Right, business. right, yeah. I never, never actually, when I used to deliver oysters to restaurants, I'd always think to myself, I never want to be in this restaurant business. <laughs> it has so many moving parts. I never remember. I was at a place in Newport, standing, watching everybody run go a mile a minute and watching uh, you know, all, all the items that need to be stocked. And I said, who remembers to order all these things, you know? And it's just, and now here I am in the restaurant business. And now you've got a true destination that is incredibly sourced. So let's go back just a little bit, because one of the questions I got was what you just brought up, was aquaculture. Mm -hmm. Am I saying right, aquaculture? Yeah. So you said you had seven acres? Seven acres, and uh, we, we produce over a million uh, oysters that go into local markets as well as uh, national markets. Uh, so you're not just supplying country. yourself, you're, just, you're supplying. Yeah, and we, um, you know, and so we, uh, we, we try to improve our methods every year and grow um, uh, more efficiently. It's farming, it's uh, constantly parasites, predators, disease every step of the way. And I actually brought some oyster seed that I want to show this. I'm going to slide this down. Yeah, just, yeah. So I want to make sure that you show this because this is pretty cool. This is kind of neat. So, Go right ahead. here's the kind of the natural progression of. Tony, um, can you see that? Okay. Of the oysters, there, there's, uh, they, that's about these four oysters are one year olds, oh, and nice. then these are all two year olds, and they grow at different rates, so they're all different sizes. And when they start, I'm going to show you this. Wow. This is. Uh, Let me hold that. Yeah, hold that. When oysters start, you get them at one millimeter or less. One in millimeter? This bag is three and a half million oyster eyed larvae. So three and a half million. Three and a half million. So this We're looking at three and a half million oysters right here. right in the palm of my hand. Now when these get to adulthood, hopefully wow. they survive, just looks like a ball of sand. Right. It's three and a half million eyed larvae. And uh, how do they oysters, count that? That's so crazy. They, they, what they do is they count how many is in a milliliter and they do that a few times and then they uh, you know, they just you know figure out how many milliliters are in a liter, and then they uh, do it volumetrically. So wow. that's how they they count it. And, and you hope you you hope you're not getting ripped off. You, <laughs> you hope so. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> these size, so these ones that you brought here yeah. from the sizes, you said these are different ages. Yeah. So these these are all one year olds, and you can see they're growing at different rates. Okay. And these are all two year olds. There, uh, uh, these you know obviously they're. They, What's the oldest you get them to? So. Uh, Two or three years old uh, is, is uh, usually gets us to market size. Okay. Um, so, uh, a lot of times, you know, some markets prefer, uh, you know, a petite oyster like that. Some right. of them like more of a medium oyster, and then some people like a larger oyster. So we grow a petite or a medium oyster, and we sell them as matunic oysters because that's where they're from. Oysters, they like wine, depending on where they're from and how they're grown, it'll impact their flavor. So yeah, I like that analogy. Oysters are like wine. We're gonna remember that one. We're gonna put this one up. Oysters are like wine. I like that. That's pretty good. So. Now you see you've got the seven acres. Now, did I see on the TEDx that you had started to grow other stuff? So I have been uh, trying to grow scallops for years, and I think I have a method that's going to be effective in growing them. So I'm getting uh, you know, two million one millimeter scallops. Uh, two million scallops next week. So this, these, you know, two million, you know, they'll fit in the palm of your hand again. Right. And I'll, I'll grow them in this uh, gear that uh, uh, me and uh, my crew. Have came up with to hopefully now, grow them better than the, uh, the other method I was using. So is that in the same area that you're doing? It's in the same, it's in the same uh, water body, yep. Okay. So this has become a lifelong passion of yours now. I mean, you're talking from 12 years old, so yeah. now you did this, you bought a restaurant, and mm -hmm. you're supplying, it sounds like, dozens and dozens of places. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, you know, I didn't get into it because of passion. I got into it because it was the best way I knew how to make a living. And then it turned into being something that, you know, if I step away from it, uh, I realize that I really do, uh, really do love it. Being being on the water, that is. I'm getting these comments. People are telling me that they love you. So I'm tell, I'm going to send out the three that he's got in a row. We're all different Thank forms you. of love for Perry in his place. So that's awesome. Now we talked briefly about something new that you were starting up besides the scallops, right? Uh, across the street or something? Is new oh, news so that you have? I right. I, I uh, recently purchased a marina across the uh, street from the restaurant, and it's now Matunic Marina. And what? Uh, uh, my plans are is to start a shellfish hatchery in uh, in that marina and uh, to actually spawn the shellfish and uh, that involves you know raising the temperature of the water gradually and, and getting fertilized larvae and feeding the larvae algae and it's a very involved process and uh, um, in this way we'll be able to have um, you know our, produce our own seed you know and then and then grow them all the way up to market size and then serve them at the restaurant 
so that is uh, that is the, the next venture here. But we're very focused on trying to improve, uh, you know, everything about you know maintain and improve everything about what we do at the Waste Bar now. So it's that's absolutely amazing. So now he's made another investment in the area. So can we talk? That's obviously we just put it out there. So we're yeah, gonna yeah, no, no, we'll yeah. talk more about that. That deal was done in March, so that's uh, that's a done deal. Now we the improvements have begun. Congratulations, Thank that's you. fantastic. And one of the other things that I've gotten, there were some of the questions you have, and I, I know I briefly saw this out there, is that you're doing tours. Yeah, yeah, we do farm tours. We, um, you know, we list them on the website and uh, um, we bring people out to the farm and show them how, uh, uh, how we grow the oysters. We talk about the... So not by farm, this is a farm on the wall. Yeah, so it's, an, uh, so it's an aquaculture. Aquaculture is the growing of aquatic organisms. People grow things like fish and shellfish for human consumption. Um, people also grow things like algae, seaweed, and every, using everyday products like toothpaste and ice cream. And people are also growing things that are using baby formulas and pharmaceuticals. So, uh, you know, we need aquaculture because more people that have gone fishing over the last, you know, hundreds of years, more, more, more fish were caught. Until about 20 years ago, we started to see a decline. So we have to fill that gap between the, you know, demand, growing demand on seafood, right. growing with population, but also growing with wealth uh, and, and the plateauing fisheries uh, from the wild. So. Um, you know, aquaculture is really the only way that, to, to meet that gap. So are there, in Rhode Island, are there a lot of other people doing similar to what you're doing? Or you oh, yeah, there's, uh, uh, I believe there's, I, I asked uh, the other day, I believe there's 60 or 70 oyster farms in Rhode Island of various sizes. I don't even know that. Yeah. So when people take these tours, because this is the question I guess they saw it on the website, they want to know what the tour is about, and it looked like that you were doing a number of these tours. Yeah, yeah so we, uh, we start at the restaurant and we talk about aquaculture on a global scale and then okay. on a local scale how we actually grow oysters at the Matunic Oyster Farm, and then we uh, and then we go out to the farm and we show them the actual gear. And so they get, they talk, they do the presentation, and then they actually get on a boat and go right out to, to check it out? Yeah. So yeah. That's, that's awesome. So not only has he got covering the aquaculture industry, the restaurant industry from a hospitality standpoint, you're doing tourism. Yeah, well, it's, uh, yeah, it's definitely, uh, you know, people like to eat shellfish when they're on. Uh, vacation and you know locals like to learn about it too. I get just many local folks going out to you do tour the farm. There's a lot of interest in it, and you know people that have been around the estuaries, the salt water all their life, and lived around here. They go out to the farm and they say, "I didn't realize that this much went into her. That this this is how it was." Right, so, right. Uh, so I enjoy doing. It. So th this goes to a point about talking about Rhode Island in general. And I was getting some tourism comments earlier. Is that we are incredibly fortunate, not just for the restaurants that we have and the tourism industry that we have, the product we showcase, but People like you have made significant investments all around. I mean, you're talking, you just bought another marina to, to continue this across from your, your current one. So this is what we have to be thankful for in Rhode Island, is these type of things happening and occurring and reinvesting in our state. So from a culinary, hospitality, and tourism standpoint, thank you so much. Thank this, this is fantastic. Thank you, you very much. So I have to ask, and I know you're not the chef, because he's got the owner, and I don't know how the hell he gets all this going on. It wouldn't be good <laughs> if I could. No, it wouldn't be good. Restaurant if I, could. Uh, I don't know how you could take on any more responsibility, but I have to say so. What are some of the favorites? So let's not talk about like a, a your preference, but what are some of the favorites that you see flying out at Matuna? Yeah, lobster rolls. Lobster uh, we rolls. have the best lobster roll in the world, and we're trying to have the best restaurant in the world. That's our goal. We never know if we'll reach it, but that's our goal. That's so cool. we try to have every dish a lot of care. Seared scallops are a huge favorite. We get those from uh, a local guy, um, uh, Chris Roebuck, who has a boat in Karen Elizabeth, and they come into Snug Harbor. Uh, right in East Matunic. So. Um, the, uh, you know, the seared scallops and lobster roll and the specials that the chef comes up with are incredible. Like the striped bass with the uh, you know, black beans and the local vegetables. And, you know, so the chef is constantly using things that come in depending on what's growing. And right now we have this really awesome uh, uh, sugar snap peas in there, really good. Oh. So we put them in the dishes. So the sugar snap peas with scallops, that's like, I'm all about that. Yeah, yeah, Let's yeah. put those two combinations together with some risotto or something, or even this quinoa. Like, I'm dying to come down and yeah, try yeah, that. That's, that's, that's absolutely amazing. Well, Perry, thank you for making the time. No, thank, thank you for joining the town. And this was truly an awesome education, and I seriously, sincerely congratulate you. Thank you. It's wonderful it. what you've done. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you. All right, we've got to be careful getting out of here. There's like yeah. we said millions in there. We've got to be careful with that.